We've done it. There is officially no need for humanity to strive towards building an elevator that is made entirely out of cortisol and dopamine. Because if we did, the music coming out of that elevator would be exactly the same as that which is played on Triple J. J. Formerly hosted by legitimately good comedians and personalities like Adam and Will, Merrick and Rosso, Helen Razor, Paul McDermott, is now hosted by the generic amalgamation of every socially uncalibrated sycophant that hovers around the periphery of your friend group and appears to mistake having a personality for being a quote unquote mean Lord. Ha ha, smash Dabo on toast. Banter. It's 2018, guys, come on. But seriously, I do believe that. It's not a joke. This is like really quirky of me. Like, seriously, I'm so embarrassed to admit this on air. I like dogs. Great vibes. But serious vibes when it comes to 5.30 on a weekday with Hack, where we're contractually obliged to educate in order to continue receiving funding. And by educate, we mean nurturing an unwarranted victim complex in our audience while simultaneously diminishing their self-awareness. Monday. So, sexual assault and violence in music festivals is getting pretty out of hand. Tuesday. Why aren't police allowing us to take heavy drugs in music festivals? We asked a cop who actually had a pretty good answer, so we just edited it down to this. They're potentially uh, extremely dangerous. Mm. And then we asked one of our friends who's a drug expert, and here's what they had to say. Man, it's true though, hey, if you think about it, like, violence came down, violence came down right now, man. Like, you know, Steph was wearing those fucking bloody shoes on that day. Look at Steph. If aliens. <laughs> if aliens. Mm. Well, I think that the big take home here is that Gandhi was wrong. A nation's greatness is actually measured by how it treats its drug fuck North Shore Gadabouse who spent $600 on a music festival ticket. You're listening to Hack, part of the Totes Diverse, in appearance only, lineup on Triple J, where everyone has the exact same worldview which can be summed up as cocaine cut with daddy issues. Where millions of your tax dollars are funneled into supporting the habits of these kids of bureaucrats that say in between songs that are on Spotify playlists anyway. <laughs> Oh, that was a pretty tasty track. How could the private sector ever do what Triple J does? Where's the financial incentive in telling an entire generation of upper middle class kids to form their baseless angst into a generic oxymoron of an identity? Cashed up hippies. I mean, this outfit at a minimum cost a thousand dollars. Where is the profit incentive? Where's the profit incentive in forming thousands of totes original microcultures with their totes original friends around the fact they took MDMA at a festival once and get mad props for it from the home of giving mad props to shit things. Triple J. We, uh, <laughs> we named our chat group MDM Mates on Facey. That is hilarious. You call yourself the MDM Mates? Yeah, I just said that. Okay, you're blacklisted, Phil. We don't tolerate misogyny here on Triple J. Aaron Brockovich, but with a penchant for tasty jams. So we're in the studio with the Boosha Boo Boos, and they just came off the Splendor stage doing a collab with the Dersha 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 Dersha. And uh, like, just got to know, like, a, how did that feel? B, how'd you guys come up with your unique sound, reverb? Well, we just thought, what if we took the simplistic forms of pop, removed the catchy melodies, the somewhat interesting lyrics, and replaced that with reverb slash chorus stringed guitars playing over a drum beat, obviously done by someone who tried to teach himself drums for the sole purpose of joining this band. Hey. And then we thought, let's make this thing it sound like Kermit and Creed had a baby and that baby has lung cancer. And fresh. And I think this is where our genius kicks in. No hipster bands are talking about this, so it really needs to be brought to the forefront, and that is my personal social anxieties. Brave. You see, this is what Triple J is all about, discovering new sounds. And by new sounds, I mean the shittest music from the 90s rehashed and really average hip-hop artists. So Australian. Everything about Triple J, if you have a flat earth view of Australia where you think it starts in Newtown and ends in Ultimo, is so Australian. Do you like the Rubens? I don't know who they are, but they won Triple J's hottest 100, so fuck. Yes. Catering to a core audience so detached from real Australia, they have an easier time sympathising with police brutality in Compton and prop up Kendrick Lamar because he needs all the publicity he can get, while arguably Australia's most popular and famous rapper, who consistently raps about poverty and culture in Western Sydney, is blacklisted because... Serial? He uses the word... Bitch. Well, he struggles universal. Like, in New you're not even allowed to drink in parks anymore. So to quote the scholar and poet Kendrick Lamar, 
feels like the whole city's against me. Uh, what do you think of Cursor? Such a fucking bogan. Triple J, home of Australian music. Please share and comment below. Command.